Hello once again, and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence, and just now I'm going to be talking about some more of the latest science news, more specifically, two pieces of news from Japan. This is just an add-on for today's video, because I just discovered that Mars One, the company that plans to send people to Mars, have officially announced what the requirements are in order to apply. And you can link to my earlier video about Mars One here, but they're not just looking for former fighter pilots or scientists. What they are looking for are people who are at least 18 years old, are intelligent, have good physical and mental health, and have a dedication to the project, and are willing to go for an eight-year training session. You know what, there's no harm in applying. Some space mission news and some levitation news. This space mission news is regarding Japan's plan to go to an asteroid in 2014. It's not a manned mission, but it is sending a probe, and it's the second time that they'll have done this. Now, back in 2003, Japan launched Hayabusa, which made its way to an asteroid called Itokawa, and it made a round mission where it went to the asteroid, it collected some samples, and it was back on Earth for 2010. Now, attached to this first asteroid mission was a sort of mini lander or mini vehicle that had been dubbed Minerva, and it failed to detach. So was the mission as successful as it could have been? No. But this new mission is called Hayabusa 2, or Falcon 2, and basically what it's going to be doing is also going to an asteroid. However, it's going to be going to an asteroid that is a C-type asteroid, and it will be leaving in 2014, arriving at this asteroid around mid-2018, and then it will be staying there for a good 18 months. And then, after that, returning in the year 2020. The name of this asteroid is 1999JU3, and it's a C-class asteroid, meaning that it's a very common type of asteroid. Around 75% of the asteroids in our solar system are C-class asteroids and also it is rich in carbon. Now this asteroid is about 4.5 billion years old, meaning that it's been altered little since the solar system was formed. And also measurements from Earth indicate that it has in its lifetime come into contact with water. Now this satellite is going to be propelled by ion cannons and it's going to have a collision device, basically which will be causing the formation of an artificial crater due to a 2 kilogram around 4 pound mass, which will be used to uncover unexposed, unweathered materials on the asteroid because the surface of the asteroid will be weathered by the solar system. A vehicle will also be taken on this trip to land on the asteroid and this is called Minerva 2. And the German Aerospace Centre are also contributing towards this mission, as they will be sending up with it their probe Mascot, which is their mobile asteroid service scout. What it will be taking with it will include a wide-angle camera microscope, a ion trap mass spectrometer, a infrared and visible light, and also it will be able to manoeuvre itself on the asteroid, meaning that it's able to take readings from different sites. But its landing won't be anything as spectacular as Curiosity's landing on Mars, as it will just be going in a free fall for 100 meters landing on the asteroid. Now in this mission they expect to find organic matter and also to look back to the early days of the solar system to have a better look at its origins. Next what we have is both lasers and levitation in one news story. Who can't love that? Various things have been successfully levitated in the past from trains to frogs. But for the first time, magnetic levitation has been used to create motion rather than just supporting things. Now, I'm sorry for absolutely destroying these names, but this research was done by Dr. Meizuyuki Kobayashi and Jiro Abe. And what they were able to do was control the movement of magnetically levitating graphite using a laser. Whilst a circular piece of graphite is levitating on top of a square magnet, with a laser being aimed at it, the laser is increasing the temperature of the graphite circle at various parts of the graphite. And with a higher temperature, the height of levitation decreases, and with a lower temperature, the height of levitation increases. Now, to know why this works, basically, it's because of the diamagnetic properties of the graphite. And if I explain the various parts of magnetism, I will link it to you in an annotation here. But basically, when the laser heats up the graphite, there are more thermally excited electrons. And the more thermally excited electrons there are, the weaker the diamagnetic properties of the graphite, meaning that it falls closer to the magnet. Now, they were not only able to make it rise and fall, also they were able to make it spin. Now, rotation was achieved using the same method, however, instead of using a square magnet underneath, they used a cylindrical magnet, which had its circular face facing the 
graphite, and with a laser aimed at the edge of the graphite, rotation occurred. Now as for the uses of this, rotation and making it rise and fall can also be caused when the graphite is exposed to sunlight, and it can be made to spin up to 200 RPM, which has the potential for use as turbines, and also it could hold the potential for light-driven transportation. That's all for now, and thanks for watching. If you have anything to say, any opinions on my videos, or anything at all, do put them down below, and I will see them, and most likely I'll respond to them as well. But that's all for now, so thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Some space mission news... News? No. News. Has been altered little since the uni... Universe? No. Dental are also contrib... Contrib... What's... Where's the back on? Back. Mobile asteroid service. Surface? No. Service? No. Surface. Flo Flogs? No. Frogs. Frames to trogs. Cleg. Negatage. I can't speak right now. Lower temperature, it goes down.